Okay, in today's video, I'm going over how to calculate the magnitude of the force on a charge particle that's moving through a magnetic field. In the previous video, the, the previous video, which you can link to in the upper right hand corner of this video, I made a video of how to determine the direction of the force using the right and the left hand rule. But this is the magnitude of the force. And this is the equation we use to calculate the magnitude of the force. That is that the force is F. It's measured in Newtons. We have the charge. Q is the charge which measures, in, which must be measured in coulombs, not micro or millicoulombs, but coulombs. And then we have V is the velocity measured in meters per second. And we have B is the magnetic field strength measured in teslas. Okay, all those must be in the base units. And then the sine of theta, we'll talk about what theta is in just a moment. Okay, so here we have our equation. And there's a couple uh, special cases I think you should be aware of when we use this equation and when we talk about a force on a charge in a magnetic field. And one is that the particle must be in motion. You can see we have the velocity here. If you just take a charge and put it in a magnetic field, just put it there and leave it there, it won't move, it won't be moving. So therefore the velocity is zero. And if all these other terms have some value but the velocity is zero, then there is no force because you multiply all those things times the zero velocity, you get a zero force, okay? Now theta is the angle between the velocity and um, the magnetic field, the motion of the particle and the magnetic field, like how the particle is moving across the magnetic field. Now there's a couple uh, kind of extreme, extreme or examples you should look at or be aware of. If in the case that the angle between the particle and the magnetic field is 90 degrees or zero degrees or 180 degrees. Okay, let's look at which of those means. If the angle between the velocity of the particle, the motion of the particle, and the magnetic field is perpendicular, is 90 degrees, then it's moving perpendicular to the magnetic field. All right? If we take the sine of 90, then we get one. Okay, so in a sense, in that case, the particle is feeling kind of the maximum or the full strength of the magnetic field. Because if the particle is moving so that it's the angle between the motion of the particle and the magnetic field is either zero or 180, then the particle is moving parallel to the magnetic field. You could say when it's zero, that's moving in the same direction as the magnetic field, and when it's 180, it's moving opposite, in the opposite direction as the magnetic field. But in both cases, it's moving parallel to the magnetic field. And you'll see, if we take the sine of zero, we get zero. If you take the sine of 180, then you also get zero. And that means when the particle is moving parallel to the magnetic field, because the sine of those two values is zero, then the particle also feels no force. It will continue moving, but it will continue moving in the same direction because it doesn't feel any force. Okay, so there's two cases, the particle is not moving or the particle is parallel to the, moving parallel to the magnetic field, it won't feel any force, all right? If it's moving perpendicular, then it feels the full force. And if it's somewhere between zero and 90, then you'll see the force will be reduced from the force it would feel when it's perpendicular because we're going to do an example right now. Okay, so here we have a charged particle. The charge on this particle is 9.5 uh, microcoulombs. And we have three different uh, examples here. We're going to say that the charge is the same, the velocity is the same, and the magnetic field strength is the same in each case. The thing that's different is the angle. Okay, in this case, B, it's moving perpendicular, so 90. In A, it's 115, and in C, the angle between the motion and the magnetic field is 25 degrees. So let's do B first, because that's kind of our base uh, example when it's moving perpendicular. So we just take all those values, all three of those values, the charge, the velocity, the magnetic field strength, multiply by the sine of 90, the sine of 90 is one, and you get that the force on that particle in that magnetic field will be 2.14, times 10 to the minus four newtons. Okay, now let's do letter A. Okay, now we have the same values Q, V, and B, but in this case, it's the sine of theta, and theta is 115 degrees, so we're gonna multiply that times the sine of theta. Now what we're doing when we multiply that times the sine of, sine of theta is we're really finding the component of this ve vector, the component of the velocity vector that's perpendicular to the magnetic field. So it's like not all of the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, but this portion is. We multiply by the sine of 115, and we get that the answer in that case 
is 1.94 times 10 to the minus 4. Now you can see when it's moving perpendicular, 2.14, when, the, when there's an angle that's greater or in a sense less than 90 degrees, then it's the, the, the force is less, or this is 1.94. We can also use this angle also here. Let's see, um, 180 minus 115, that's going to be, uh, I think, 65. Okay, if you take 65, sine of 65, um, uh, you could also, you get the same answer. Okay. All right, now the, the next one, C, once again, we just use the same value. So I'm just going to put down here, this is just uh, Q times V times V is the same value, but this time we're going to multiply it times the sine of 25 degrees. Okay, so the angle is reduced here to 25 degrees, and you can see once again we're finding the component of the velocity that's perpendicular to the magnetic field, which is represented by this purple arrow. And you can see obviously it's less than this one, so therefore the force is going to be less because that angle um, is less like is less, and therefore it's 9.04 times 10 to the minus 5. Right? Each of these is minus 4, minus 4, and this is minus 5 newt newtons. All right, so full force, perpendicular, a little less, and then less even as the angle gets smaller. All right, we're going to just do one more example. And this example, it says we have a proton is moving through a magnetic field to the north. So here's our proton, positively charged, moving to the north with a velocity of this. And it's moving uh, through a magnetic field. And it says here from the magnetic field is pointing to the uh, west. The proton feels a force of 7 uh, times 10 to the minus 14 newtons, and we want to know what is the magnetic field strength, and then we're given the charge on a proton. You could look that up. It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Here's the equation that we're going to use. Now, um, we're solving here for the magnetic field strength, so we're solving for B. Now, the particle is moving perpendicular, so this is the sine of 90 degrees, which is 1, so we can kind of just drop that off. So I'm going to solve for B. B is equal to the force divided by Q times V. Just simply plug those numbers in. B is equal to the force. The force we said is 7.0 times 10 to the minus 14 newtons. We divide that by the charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs times the velocity, 4.5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. And we get that in this case, the magnetic field strength is 9.7 times 10 to the minus 2 Teslas. Okay, so there you go. We did some quick examples. I showed you how to calculate the magnitude of the force on a charged particle that's moving through a magnetic field. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a thumbs. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And uh, don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.